have to all be rosy. Yeah. Because then you're that person saying everything's fine. Life is hard. Life is hard. And I like that. Okay, so this is from Deborah. Thoughts on framing this in terms of social um, community theories related to eliciting an observer's motivation to want to provide care in service to survival. Diagnostic uncertainty challenges the human need of knowing they are in good standing with a group or community to ensure survival. The idea that one needs to prove that there is no social deceit that a valid diagnosis offers. Because it um, because if not deemed to be in good standing with the group or society, they will be um, deemed worthy of care, driven by the biological worry of excommunication. Is that a question? Just That's fucks. beautiful. Yeah. <laughs> That's Deborah. It's Deborah. She's, yeah. Do you want to talk about it? That's, I mean, that's, that is like beautiful and heavy and thought provoking. I'm, I'm just curious. Hold on. So people at home can hear. You can come up too if you want. I don't need to. I'll stand up though. So kind of stemming from my own investigations into shame and stigma yeah. work and that it signals to the person who's experiencing the shame that the, like the social communication mm -hmm. signals to the person who is feeling the shame that the observer has judged something mm. as less than not worthy, right? Social deceit, right? And so we're driven to want to stay in good standing within our group for survival, like biologic survival mm -hmm. over the last, you know, many thousands of years. And that if I don't have a valid diagnosis mm -hmm. that confirms that I'm not cheating, right, will that change the motivation of the observer and their drive to want to help me? Does that make sense? Yeah. <laughs> I'm just, I mean, that's all I hear is just, is this is all about social communication, yeah. right? And what is the purpose of expressing a need state? The purpose is to elicit care, yeah. right? And if I can't have a valid diagnosis that's believable, yes. why would anyone want to help me? Right. right? And, and so in that paper Tamar wrote, Chasing the Ghosts, it's, it's a beautiful paper. I'm happy to share it with people. She talks about that, like the guilt that that evokes in the person. And that to me at first was like, what? Why would you, why would you feel guilty? But they feel guilty that there's not, like they take that on themselves, that there's not like a valid, valid, legitimized reason for the pain. And, and they, they experience the stigma and they attribute that to being their fault. Right? Um, it's kind of heartbreaking, isn't it? So yeah, I think, I think it is all a transaction. And that's what's gotten me more and more interested in the power relationship, right? Because it's not just the observer. And it's like, like, there's a lot of power there, right? So then how does that sort of play into that transaction? It's a transaction, right? Well, and part of the power is the gatekeeping of care. Yes. Right. And I mean, all, all of that. Right. So if I, yes. if, if they, in within providers, part of our own identity is I, I'm a good clinician. Yeah. I figure out the patterns. I help people get better. Yeah. And if I can't knowingly feel confidence that I can help this person, yeah. am I going to be less driven to want to help them mm, like learned helplessness well just it challenges my identity yeah right i'm an expert i know how to help people yeah and if i'm confronted with a patient that challenges right that identity for yeah. myself might i want to distance from them right kind of creating more distance in those relationships yeah. in the clinic wow. um do you want to write a paper like I, that I, that is yeah, I'm actively doing that, actually. That is, that is really... Sarah's read a version. <laughs> I know, and I, I realized sitting here listening, yeah. I'm like, I think I have another version to read, but that was in my personal email that I need to get to. Um, but yeah, yeah, it's... We can chat more. Yeah, please. It's what the fireside chat is for. Let's do it around the fire for. pit tonight. No, but that's really... 
I think that's why I really liked like interviewing those clinicians, right? Like this is hard for them. It's antithetical to sort of like, it's not, it's contrary to their medical training too, right? And it's uncomfortable. And ultimately, you'll never know definitively, will you, if something was missed? How will you ever know? I listened to a podcast a couple weeks ago. It's this woman who got diagnosed with cancer, like stage four cancer. She was like 34 and she had like a young kid and her pain was dismissed and over, you know, if, if someone had taken a functional approach to her pain, she would have died, right? This is really hard stuff. And I, I don't envy being in that position to make that call and to draw that line in the sand. Yeah, cool. Yeah, I want to talk to you. So to be continued at the fire pit. Yes, yes. Awesome. So